Raphael, thank you for coming in today. You have such a great background with your electrical engineering, your MBA, your director of research and engineering, uh, your founder of Quantum South. You got so many years in broadcasting, telecommunications, and IT companies as a consultant of your national research systems, your fellow of the National Academy of Engineering, and the list goes on and on and on. You're very, very accomplished, uh, both from an industry standpoint, working and supporting your government, your 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 region as well, and globally through IEEE, but also as a, as a renowned researcher and, and more. So again, thank you for coming in and sharing your experiences with our audience. Thank you very much, Stephen. I'm really delighted to be here with you. I have enjoyed many of your interviews, previous interviews. Uh, well, very inspiring. And I also have shared with you some pieces of work, volunteer work, organizing some workshops related to quantum computing uh, ecosystems. Uh, well, I really enjoy working together. Um, well, so I know you are all, you also make great efforts for improvement or of the ecosystem, either in quantum computing, but also in other areas of advanced technology. So thank you very much for inviting me. So, you know, Raphael, my audience, and my audience is very diverse, by the way. There are CEOs and investors and scientists and practitioners in the in technology and students. And they're always curious. They, in fact, they always come up to me and say, Steve, you know, you have these uh, really remarkable people and, uh, you know, what were what drove them to be what they are? So that's my question to you, Raphael, because you are remarkable. <laughs> You're doing such just some wonderful work. What were well, two or three inflection points that made you who you are today? And it could have been when you were like five or 10 and later in your career. Well, uh, you know, I am what I am. I think I am still under development. So I am not a finished, a, 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 a finished career, neither a finished person. So I always have to improve and I always effort too much for that. And I think that that has been constantly during my life. Uh, I remember in my childhood and in my uh, as a teenager and in my youth, always doing my best effort together with my mates and my friends and my family to obtain the best of me. I mean, I was always referring to the, referring to studies, for example, always uh, interest in, in every matter, but I pursue a career in engineering because I decided when I, I was uh, at the late before before entering uh, the university. I always uh, well, as I said, I was interested in many things, but my uh, main advantages, comparative advantages, were in mathematics and physics. And as a matter of fact, physics was one of my passions. But unfortunately, by that time, you know, I am based in Uruguay. I was born here. All most of my career was held here. And uh, well, it was a time of we had no internet. So the luckily world we live today, the wonderful day of globalization in which you and me can be talking together was not that in the 80s and 90s. So the opportunities for young people were not as clear as today, at least in my region, in Latin America. So I decided to study uh, engineering instead of physics, which was, I think, my original passion. But after that, engineering became a passion also. And either studying, but also the professional exercise of engineering. So there are plenty of things to do, to share with people. Uh, well, imagine that being an engineer 
especially I've been in the broadcast industry, industry in the 90s and during the first decade in the, in the 2000s, uh, I witnessed a complete, a complete, not solo witnesses, but I was uh, a prime actor in, in, in a complete transformation of the industry from complete analog to complete digitalized. From very, in, when in a stage or an age in which audiovisual content was exchanged through video cassettes or videotape to now, which is exchanged through fiber optics, through satellite, through the internet. Mm -hmm. So I witnessed all that and that is marvelous. And that is something that I try, well, I will have to talk uh, to tell you that in parallel I have had an, an academic car uh, career. And that is something I try to to show my students that uh, the world that they are going to build is much, will be much more exciting. And, um, and, and that that is a, a main driver, I think that should be a main driver for them to study hard, to be prepared, to have uh, clever ideas to build that world and to be able to do that. So I can talk to you uh, later about that. But, uh, well, so I've been in the industry, particularly in broadcasting, that is very exciting, or used to be very exciting um, industry, close to the stars, close to high technology. And I started working at in the industry as a student, an electrical engineer, and I ended up as, as, as a, a director of engineering for an important TV station here, which also has operations in, in cable TV, and satellite TV, and radio, either AM and FM. So important local uh, group. But after that, uh, well, I say, I continue from, since I was a student, I continue, I, I, I start teaching as an assistant professor and so on, and then I become a professor. And although I was at the industry, I continue working as a professor. But years later, well, I make an MBA and so on. And years later, I had the chance, I was invited to think about a new career in a new university, which was, which is the university I work now, is Universidad de Montevideo. And I was invited to, to conceive a new, a new career on engineering, which this, this university at that time had civil engineering and industrial engineering. And uh, well, with a committee, I started working on telematics engineering. That is, uh, tries to cover all the, all the aspects of information communication te technology. That is some telecommunication engineering together with computer science. Mm -hmm. This science. So these guys were extremely prepared. So that's what's success. So, we continue uh, expanding the other careers and so on. And well, to some moment, it became incompatible to start to work at the industry. I mean, at uh, the broadcast industry and at the university. So I make a decision, but that time I was pursuing a PhD in engineering at the University of Vigo in Spain, remotely with some uh, stays there. So I continue. So I decided to set up mainly at the industry, uh, at the academia, at the University of Montevideo. Uh, well, I've been here as a full time professor for many years, also with management of 
some part of management of the careers, coordination of, of telematic engineering and on computer science. So I'm researching. And research is what I like most. So I am now I am director of research. The university is growing. And what I don't know if you want to make any questions, so I can continue. I think I will continue talking or remembering things. For example, something that something that is has been, please, Stephen, interrupt me whenever you want. But I would like to highlight, for example, and that maybe if you have students in your audience, maybe something important for them or good advice for them. Uh, something important in my career was to be a volunteer at IEEE. IEEE is a worldwide network with 400,000 professionals and students and plays a prime role in networking, in standard development, in journals, in conference, uh, related to all aspects of technology. And uh, well, I started working locally in my section, then I became, and, and, and globally, because at that time, as I say, I was with Broadcast Technology Society. I continue to be there. I am now a education chair of the Broadcast Technology Society, but I start attending a international conference to present our work. And that was a milestone, the moment in which we from Uruguay put the first a uh, international conference I attend was in Seoul, in Yonsei University. Uh, well, I was very excited that my work was valued and I could contact almost pair to pair with academics from renowned universities in the world. So that encouraged me to continue expanding this network. And uh, well, during the years, uh, in that society, I became a member of the board of the society, which is called the Bro the Administrative Committee. I've been elected to, for two periods of three years. And uh, I have had many roles there. And uh, well, that gave me knowledge or experience on how to expand our our network, international network, and, and give us confidence on that here from Uruguay, you know, Uruguay is in South America. It's a very small country, 3.5 million people between two giants, which is our Brazil and Argentina. We have coast with the Atlantic Ocean, and we are one hour with different with Eastern time, uh, from the US, so we are one hour ahead. So it is very easy from here to work, to meet with, with the US, especially with America, but also with, with Europe. And I said, well, we were, uh, we were very, very confident to start working on different state uh, research project with colleagues from Italy and so, and I started attending uh, many meetings from IEEE, from governments of this society of IEEE. Well, these meetings may coinc uh, coincide with many great events. One is the Consumer Electronic Shows held every January in Las Vegas, CES, and I had the opportunity there to witness the arose of quantum computing. For example, IBM every year was having in a more privileged uh, spot its quantum computing. They were showing every time with more more and more exposure the quantum computing. So well one has 
uh, well, the technology uh, surveillance I was doing, well, I was aware of quantum computing. That was about 2018, the first time I, I saw this quantum computer at CES, 2000, January 2018. By next year, 2019, I invited an IBM quantum ambassador to visit my university. So there, an IBM quantum ambassador came here. He started working. He, he made a workshop, a three-day workshop, which was open for students, for faculty, and for professionals. That was a success. And we get aware of the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge that was being held during 2019. So we set up a multidisciplinary team. Uh, well, we make a submission by October 2019. That is something that, uh, well, it was new. Quantum computing was new for me. But going back, remember that I told you as a student, my passion, I, I, I love physics. So I study, I study modern physics and quantum mechanics together with the students of the Bachelor of Physics. So that was a, that gave me a background that was useless during 20 years, say, but in one moment when I came to know what is quantum computing, its basis and so, well, I could understood everything because I had studied that 20 years ago. I, I know the maths, I know the intuition and so on. So it's very easy. It was very easy. I, I, I also had excellent collaborators who immediately, uh, well, we made a great team and we, well, we make a submission to the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge, and we were one of the five finalists worldwide. And after that, we, we decided, we say, well, we have value here. We shall continue uh, with a startup with this, trying to see, trying to bring the value of quantum computing to the market. We want to explore. And uh, well, we are, since 2019 with, with Quantum South, we founded Quantum South. Um, we are, uh, something that we like is that we are, we, we feel that we are world-class. We have a lot of disadvantages, but we are uh, running a race uh, almost together with uh, great players. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, this is just an example that happened today. This morning, we have an interview with uh, the Qatar, Qatar Open Innovation Program. We were shortlisted in a, in a challenge from uh, Milaja, that is an operator there on logistics, in port logistics, in automation and automation of storage planning. So uh, that is an example from today. So today I started uh, very early my journey. Uh, uh, that's an example, but we are running proof of concepts of our algorithms. Uh, with prime airlines in Europe and in, and in the United States. We have NDA agreements, so we cannot disclose their names by now, but these proof of concepts are, are running. Uh, are, so far, we are having good results. Uh, we hope that we can continue to a pilot stage. Uh, well, then let's see that it's a success also. We can continue with, with implementation and 
uh, production stage, but that will be probably takes next year at least. Um, our base, our our group, or our startup has a, the people is the main people is here in Uruguay, but we also have collaborators in Ecuador, in Mexico, in Argentina. So there is a lot of talent in Latin America. It's a continent which is unharvested. Uh, we want to play a role there to, to allow this challenge to show to the world. Just as, as, as we are doing, uh, well, we want, to, we want to be a vehicle there. But, well, this is a challenge because we have to have large problems in, in primary players in the world, and we have to build trust and uh, that will come with results. And, and well, uh, but that is our our plan. We have there with we visualize we have a lot of human resource available. Uh, in particular, in my country, in Uruguay, which is our base, is a very stable country. We have excellent telecommunications uh, infrastructure. Say, for example. I think that 80 something percent of the households has fiber optics. It's connected to the internet by fiber optic to the home. Almost 100 percent of the of the territory of the country is covered by uh, wireless by LTE, and now there are starting 5G pilots. And that is only a part, a technological part, but Uruguay has had since 2005, uh, has delivered, you know, the program One Laptop Per Child from MIT. Uh, well, Uruguay was the one, the first one we, we implemented that. And we have a, a generation of children which is now growing. Um, we have had a, from school, from primary school, the government has donated them a laptop. Uh, and we have extremely good uh, stability, democracy indexes, um, um, financial stability, <clears throat> and also other social uh, indicators like literacy and so on are extremely good compared to Latin America. I can say that Uruguay is the country that has a gross income per capita. I think it's the higher one in Latin America right now. And well, but the important thing is that we have here access to bright people. You know, we learn the, we are very <clears throat> strict in math, in mathematics and in physics during the first, first years of the career. And we, we, we have at the university very talented people. So with that, I'm confident that we can face more and more and more and larger problems. You know, that, it, there's a lot to uh, unpack. <laughs> okay, you talked about a lot. Uh, you know, you, you, you talked about your uh, journey and <clears throat> you studied uh, uh, electrical engineering, but you had this passion for physics. And I can see how that passion for physics ties in with your uh, interest in quantum computing. You, you did a startup uh, on quantum computing. Uh, you talked about how your country has this, uh, you know, great sort of history of, of education and the one laptop per child. Interestingly, I just finished interviewing last a uh, couple of weeks ago, 
a Mary Lou Jepson, who actually invented, <laughs> she's, she's the one who actually created that one laptop for, for child. And uh, so now it's interesting that your country uh, was, uh, had this great vision to say, you know what, we want to roll this out. And you also talked about the fact that you have wide, uh, you know, fiber optic coverage very early on, and you got a mobile coverage. And in fact, you're moving into 5G, but you're very stable, a great education system, a great populace to support all of this sort of engineering and, and science and, and being really at the forefront of many of these areas. But you, you talked about your journey too. So I'm just kind of for the audience, you know, uh, uh, physics and then electrical engineering, and now you're your director of research at the School of Engineering, and but you have your hat in industry as well. And and earlier you talked about spending time um, in the broadcast industry, and I want to go back to that for a moment. But from an academic standpoint, you've always been balancing the industry part with the academic side. So you're a member of the National Research System. You're a fellow of the National Academy of Engineering. You're and um, you've been awarded recognition as this top scientist uh, because of all the work you're doing. But interleaving all of that, you also mentioned IEEE and how that's been so important in your journey and your background in industry and as an entrepreneur with uh, Quantum South. So now I want to sort of get into more detail about your um, industry experience, right? So... I know that you spent, uh, you know, more than 20 years in the broadcast cable and telecommunications industry and went to IT companies. How did that come about? How it came about? How how I started there? Yeah. Yes. I, well, I was a student, but that time, an uh, engineering degree in Uruguay where six year, a career of six year. Um, and well, I was say five degree and my, well, I received a call from, I mean, a professor which was teaching in six degree television, precisely that radio television, make a call for students so I attended, and that was, was very exciting because imagine in the early 90s, it was very exciting to work in a TV station. And uh, well, I got the I got the position and I worked there, and I worked more than 18 years there. Um, and well, it was extremely interesting but it also it's extremely a uh, requirement i mean it is 24 <laughs> 7. we were very few people uh the channel runs all time and uh, skilled people who were we were few and um, well it is a very different uh, type of show much more operational and technical and solving problems. Um, well, uh, the team grow. Uh, well, if you want to, me to tell me more about that, no, it was incredible. Like for example, I make the first uh, the first web page, for example, for a, a TV station or a, a, a journal. A, a journal that was in 95, I think, they made the first uh, website for for the newsroom of the of the the news program of of, of, of the TV channel that was 95. And then something interesting, for example, another thing that is interesting, I always, although I was working there full day, I also have other, other jobs helping other companies more related to telecommunications, to service provider, or mainly integrators. So this 
guys where I helped them with routers and uh, router configuration. And so that is something that is IP, something that I didn't have at the TV station. So I learned a lot there. But in a moment, they were, they, we conceived there a, a program for supermarkets and warehouse and pharmacy for point of sales, but include, including integrated video. That was completely new, something in 2000, 2001. Uh, I must say, I had a sad, uh, a sad uh, memory, for example, that we were making the pilot in a in a in a supermarket, a large supermarket chain, in the 11 September 2001, and we after knowing that the first tower was crashing, I went to the supermarket. I plugged the live feed from the cable TV, and people saw in the point of sale, the second crash in the point of sale in the in the in the supermarket. That was incredible, imagine. Something that the, before that, the point of sales was some piece of iron with with buttons. And now it's a PC with with a screen and you can be online watching what is happening in the world. Well, that product that started that, that time, well, that company spread it. It has now thousands and thousands of point of sales, at least in different countries in Latin, in Latin America, I don't know, in other parts of the world. But that was, I think that was something new I made from from merging two words, one with video and the other one IT or network or video coding and so on. So that was something new that between, now we are we are very used to streaming and so, but by that time it was not so, so common. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but, I can say that later I started studying or I enrolled in my PhD studies in the University of Vigo. And uh, well, that I intensified my academic, uh, my academic uh, focus. Uh, and I enjoy it very much, I think that is necessarily two different mindsets. So in one, you need more people, although in the industry, you need to know a lot of technical knowledge, you know, and, and, and you need creativity, but for good research, you need a deepness. And well, I love that. But as you can see, I during my 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 period uh, in the industry, I make an MBA. Uh, well, I'm, I am a mix. I suppose I am a mix. I suppose all of us are a mix of trajectories. But uh, well, that gave me once that after being the finalist in the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge, and we decide to to. Go ahead with a new with as entrepreneurs. Well, I say, well, this is new for me in academia. I am in another position, although I continue being consultant, as you mentioned, for the government, for the government, especially in the broadcast industry and from 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 other from other parts. But uh, I continue working with the industry, but from consultancy. So now this was a new challenge. Well, to become an entrepreneur. Well, I have a great team. In particular, I have a, a great partner 
which has uh, experience with global global services, especially from global services from Uruguay. You know that, for example, most of the IT exports from Uruguay are to the United States, almost 70%. Um, that says something. There is a lot of talented people here working for abroad, especially from the United States, because there is no special tax. It's very convenient to develop here. So for in particular for the United States. And so there is a lot of people doing that. Uh, I mean, if uh, if you if I work for a company in the States and um, charge them one hundred dollars, I receive one hundred dollars free of taxes. My company receives it, so it's very convenient. Uh, so that kind of uh, that kind of uh, well things to foster the industry here are done. We have a lot of disadvantages, geographical disadvantages, but we can be, if I want to go to visit you, I can I can be uh, at your office tomorrow for sure. No, but but it is uh, but we are but I have a, a long trip. Mm -hmm. uh, we have disadvantages, but we have some advantages, of course. The, co the cost of living here also is, is lower, so salaries are lower. But IT is an exception that since it has this international exposure, uh, we have IT, IT workers have more, more income than, than other ones. But uh, I want to point out something I told you before that we are working, working and accessing large corporations, especially in the airline sectors, especially uh, airlines and airport terminals. And we, uh, pandemia, the pandemics has been has had, although it, all the unfortunate situation, which is the most important, of course, of the pandemics, in our case, it has uh, an angle, a positive angle, because during 2020, which was the time we were starting, uh, well, all of us were at our, at home. Uh, maybe somewhere at office, but we were all and we were uh, used to talk to each other. Uh, we, we became more used to talk to each other, to emit, uh, to meet uh, through through the network. I don't like to the word virtual because I I think I talking to you now not virtually, but remotely, hmm? not in person, but remotely. But uh, so in 2020, for example, we we have, we were lucky enough to be selected for an accelerator program in Europe, IoT Tribe, uh, especially for the aerospace industry. Uh, and it was, it helped, a lot to us in our early stage to shape our structure and our KPIs. And uh, well, we have a, a focus on that. And regarding our KPIs, one is to have to be a global player. So we are uh, one of our efforts is to organize, we organize conference worldwide, as I say, in ITP, uh, we share uh, in September, we too share the organization of the workshop on quantum computer entrepreneurship, 
during ITP Quantum Week, which was in, in Bloomfield, Colorado. But we also shared it last year virtually. Um, in 2020, it was the first edition. So that is a, just an example. I am volunteer, for example, in the Consumer Technology Society of IEEE. Uh, well, I was appointed. I was appointed as the chair of the Quantum in Quantum Consumer Technical Committee, which is has been just founded. And well, we are shaping that. So we are worried there about about a, well expanding the the field of application of quantum computing of quantum computing bringing to consumer technology. Consumer technology, well, it's extremely broad and. And, and there are enormous fields of of of, of application, mm -hmm. say from system recommendation to to the shaping or enormous calculations that the metaverse implementation will imply. And well, there are a lot of also for vehicles, for example. Vehicles, something that is in the consumer industry, uh, you know, for autonomous vehicles and for the location, the BMW last year had a challenge, a quantum computing challenge. Uh, the challenge for one of the problems was to how to locate the sensors for the autonomous, for to allow uh, the autonomous the autonomous driving. So that is something, another thing that I'm trying to, to be part of it in the, in the world scenario. Mm -hmm. And well, something extra, like I, we also, we, we both are mem members of TEMS, ITB TEMS, which is the ITB Technology and Engineering Management Society. Uh, well, in these past two years, I have made some short articles about how different organizations are facing their challenge on quantum computing. Some of them are outsourcing, for example, BMW. So I mean, I, I mentioned TEMS because I published these articles in, in a journal of, of IEEE TEMS, which is the engineering management review. Um, um, and well, these are short articles about different aspects. For example, I have I made BMW, about BMW has considered a new uh, methodology to select its uh, its suppliers, and so they make the their quantum computing challenge last year to select their suppliers. So they had some companies they selected and are, well, at least their intention was for them to come to suppliers, their suppliers. In other, in other companies, for example, I made, I studied the case of Itaú Bank, which is the largest bank in Latin America is a Brazilian bank, uh, Itaú. Uh, on the contrary, is building inside the, the quantum workforce. The people from innovation was uh, 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 attentive to, to these new developments. They had a, a young, and motivated PhD uh, woman, and uh, she's now the head of quantum inside the bank. And uh, well, she's doing a revolution there. He's many people is uh, uh, well tries to work with her with her and so. So we ha I have an article on that. I have an article, for example, on 
an entrepreneur, important entrepreneur on quantum computing, which is Christopher Savoy, CEO of Zapata Computing. We admire Zapata Computing. And I have the, I was lucky enough to, to interview him um, together with uh, Terry France, professor from Harrisburg University uh, in Pennsylvania. And well, to Christopher, well, it was incredible to have his insight. He has also been many years in Japan. Uh, he has uh, founded different companies in technology related to health. Uh, now he's in the US with Zapata Computing, which is uh, well, one of the main software companies. Uh, it's a model for us. It's been a model for us for some time. So I um, I also like writing, <laughs> Steve. So, you know, I can see this thread, right? And we talked about earlier your interest in physics and engineering, electrical engineering, and then you get this job uh, working in the broadcast industry, and then you take the, that video expertise and you integrate this into like um, supermarkets and things like that, like the first implementation of that. So that consumer interest now uh, kind of pervades everything you do, right? I mean, uh, uh, you're an elected member of the administrative committee of the IEEE Broadcast Technology uh, Society. And uh, um, you chair the education committee of the society. Your research is in uh, video qu uh, experience quality and the social applications of artificial intelligence and technology. So I can see how that early embedding into broadcasting and so on has now infused this uh, consumer aspect, you know, the, the proliferation and even on your quantum computing interests, this practical use from a consumer standpoint, a more broader uh, standpoint and so that's an that's an interesting uh, mix <laughs> you're quite quite unique in that you're, you're the consumer with the research with the engineering with the broadcast uh, and then getting into really frontier technologies like quantum so and then also uh, sharing so many things with an IEEE both with an IEEE itself uh through the consumer as applications and the quantum applications, but also with the technology and engineering management society. And, and throughout all of this, now you you got the strong interest in, in quantum computing and you've written papers on quantum computing and how it's been practically being used in, in different companies and things like that. And, and also in South America, I, in this last part, cause we're getting to sort of the end of our, our interview, you're the co-founder of the startup called Quantum Cell. Can you talk about um, what you hope to achieve with Quantum Cell? You, you, you've you been selected, um, I think you mentioned earlier about Qatar and their innovation uh, through your startup Quantum Cell. Uh, you got other um, pilots and practical applications uh, coming to the fore. And uh, what, what are some specific use cases for Quantum Cell? And, and where do you see that going, let's say, by 2025 and 2030? Yes. Um, thank you for your question. Yes, we have we have two products now that we can run proof of concepts and we can install it in, in Recon. These two products, one of them is derived from the Airbus Quantum Computing Challenge is the problem of how to load an aircraft. It was called the aircraft loading optimization. Uh, the, what Airbus proposed was an extremely simplified problem in which containers were just squares or, or rectangles, and the airplane was a rectangle. And, but after being finalists, we continue working with that with the support of Airbus and approaching airlines. So we gave much more reality to this. Um, I mean, imagine the, a freighter, an aircraft has different 
uh, size is not homogeneous. It has some uh, thinner parts at the end, and the containers ha can be has different types and so on. So the problem here is: imagine you have two hundred containers at the warehouse, and you want to select each container has its type. That means dimensions and volume and so. Each container has its weight, its volume, its its revenue associated, for example, and it has its priority. And you want to select which of those two hundred containers uh, you want to select, which will travel in that particular aircraft. That was the original problem of the. That was a simplified version of that problem was proposed by Airbus. And well, by one year, one year ago, we delivered a complete solution, very realistic, in which contemplates a lot of constraints. So imagine this is a combinatorial problem, a large combinatorial problem, but that problem we can run now on quantum manilas. We run on D-Wave, and that is something, you know, we need, we need, we, are, we have very short funding. We don't have funding for long-term research, although we are doing some, but we need to close business to get incomes. That is, that is why we are focusing on what we can do now. And this is a problem we solve with technology existing today. And we can run for, on the way, but if the we can study with the with the client, if the client prefers to use another provider, we can explore what the other model, which is the uh, universal quantum uh, gates model, quantum gates model. Uh, we can see what size of problems it can it can approach now or solve now. But that problem we we solve now and with that problem has a second part, which is once you selected those containers which maximize the feature you want to maximize, priority, revenue, and weight, well, you have to that is uh, respecting certain constraints of not overpassing the volume, the weight, or on incompatible loads that cannot be together. And you have to see, first thing is to re reorder it, to permute, to put the center of gravity towards an objective. It is not if the load is all at the back or all at the, at the front, but there must be a certain distribution to put the certain of gravity towards an objective. So the plane goes in the, with the angle it is expected to minimize fuel consumption during the flight. So it has impact on, on, ex, on expenses of, 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 of and fuel and impact of course on environment. So that, and after fi that finally, there's some, the, we run some uh, verification of this, some part of the structure that must be uh, respected, a structural limit that must be verified to be respected. So that is one of the products we have now. The other one is not from Airbus, but it's from our approach to airlines, something that we found was interesting. That is what we call the 3 d packing problem. And it is this, it is the problem of arranging boxes inside a container. So imagine you have a thousand of boxes in the warehouse and you want to minimize them. You want to put them in containers in order to minimize the number of containers. That is a enormous combinatorial problem. So that is perfect for, for quantum computing. And we want, uh, that, that is one possibility. Another possibility is say, for example, 
you are uh, uh, an airline and you have a passenger flight, uh, the passenger has six positions for containers, for cargo. And well, which of the packages I have on the warehouse, each one with certain priority, which are the ones which I have to put in the containers and they fit. So that is something we do. This we have a product to select which which packages will go, and then which packages will go in which container, and then how to arrange it and verify. And we have a visualization tool on how where each boxes go inside the container. Contemplating constraints of on cap on cap incompatibility in the loads and so on. So those are things that we are running proof of concept, I said, with some airlines in the US and in, in, in Europe. And we are working on other problems to save fuel during climate optimization. That, those are more air anti problems with more, more long term, but we are also now getting to maritime. Maritime, maritime trade is 80% of the main, 80% of the of the cargo is made through maritime uh, cargo. So we are there are also this this last problem I said is applicable to to maritime because it's direct how to arrange packages inside a container. But there are other problems with uh, which we have been studying and we are approaching stakeholders to work together. But for example, there are in, in maritime cargo, what is very expensive is the time employing the terminal. So that is, uh, are, there are combinatorial problems to optimize there and we are uh, deploying or developing solutions, not deploying, developing solutions for that. And we want to do it together with the industry. We need we need to work, we need founded projects. Uh, we need to work, we need to, we need founded projects to bring the advantages of quantum computing to logistics, in particular to cargo. And we need partners on the industry to explore together how to do that. And the partner will benefit for, um, well, for exploring, you know, quantum, you have written a lot about quantum computing, about its applications, about when it will come. Many manufacturers have been accomplishing during the years, its goals, and we will have large quantum computing in some years. So it's time, time to study which are your study, your 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 use case, and uh, we can run, uh, we can study together, we can collaborate on that. Say and maybe we can dimension the problem. Uh, we'll see if we can run. What we would like to know is compare how it is done today and how it would be done if it was done with our algorithms. So to benchmark there to compare and well to see if we can have today an advantage brought by quantum computing. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, you know, you definitely already have practical applications in, in quantum self, this startup, which you co-founded. You're, you're working with airlines already. You, you're working with uh, providers of the underlying uh, hardware technology, and you can run applications through there, the, the algorithms and so on that you're designing uh, for, for these systems. You've got a path of continual partnerships and use cases and so on. 
And on the financing side, then you you've already well established on the financing of, of your startup, or where is that? Yes, our our um, in finances is um, uh, well two things there. First, that I said that uh, we are working on air cargo and maritime cargo. We have also worked on finances financing portfolio optimization and we want to develop we, we have some algorithms there but we are in that case we are not approaching there are all, all, some other software quantum computing software companies working on that so we are not working on that now but it's something that algorithms are very similar i mean we know we have knowledge on how to do that um and we 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 can we can do, um, and in finance in the in our startup we have we have our founding is something like precedent. We have our own investment and investment from family and friends, and we have support from the national agency of of research and innovation, but and we. That has assured us for a couple of years, and we have some more time ahead for our next year or the other, but grow as we need and to play the role we want to play. Uh, so we are we are open, uh, we are, we are, that's it, that to, to secure the team and to, perform the to perform the the commercial I mean to strengthen the our commercial actions to secure our technical team to strengthen our, our commercial actions and to have better contracts or larger contracts with providers so far in these past two years, we have worked with many quantum providers. I mean, we 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 are hardware agnostic. We can work with any hardware, and we have worked with most major uh, hardware providers. With the wave is the one with we have how to make uh, larger problems. But we as as universal quantum gate machines get larger. We are now developing optimization programs or researching on optimization algorithms for to use in 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 these other uh, machines. Um, Quantum South uh, is working with IBM since 2019, and this year we became IBM members of the IBM Quantum Network. And it is the first organization, say academia or industry, which is part of IBM Quantum Network in all Latin America. The university is also a member from 2020 of the Microsoft Quantum Network as a curriculum partner. We are one of 14 universities in the world together with UCLA, uh, University of Washington, for example, to name just two. Um, we are the only one in Latin America to secure this role we envision uh, and, we, and that we know we can do it, we can cope with it. And, and as, as I said at the beginning, Latin America is a unharvested continent and region regarding quantum computing. And there is a lot of talent uh, and has a lot to give to the world. That so, said, I have, I have to tell you, this afternoon, I'm traveling to Mexico because part to represent IEEE entrepreneurship. You know, IEEE has uh, 
has a, a new initiative which is called entrepreneurship. Uh, I will there will be um, it will be held close to Mexico City. Uh, the regional the student branch regional meeting. Regional here means Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, so there will be a say a summit or a meeting of the students. And I've been invited to represent ITP entrepreneurship to encourage them, to give them the, the entrepreneurship view and so on. So this afternoon I, I, I'm traveling uh, to well to say to to disseminate this spirit of entrepreneurship in, in my region to students. Well, you know, Raphael, just to cut uh, quite a remarkable career. I only have one more question, and and what is your recommendation to the audience? Well. Depending on, on the stage of their life and, or their pro profession, but for sure, first of all, to look at, the, at, at your interviews and uh, at your articles that will enlighten them. And now, but to, to keep studying, yeah, especially for young students, study hard, study deep, uh, follow a career in technology. Uh, but while being technically strong, you also have to have, say, uh, deploy your antennas for the new. You have to be open to the new and you have to be clear in your ideas and connecting different worlds. And a third, a third characteristic that I think a young people need to have is knowledge of the field of application, knowledge of the business. And so, so that will that mix of the technical knowledge, the innovation, um, say um, skills and the knowledge of the business will bring you the ideas to have new ideas and to be an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur inside your company or in general to have a successful professional career. In general for the professionals, well, the same, to continue studying, continue reading is extremely important to be so we are living exciting times and uh, it's easy now to to waste your time on ephemer i don't know if ephemer is a word in english but a vanishing a vanishing content you have to continue uh, feeding yourself with rich content, maybe in different platforms, maybe videos, maybe books, maybe courses, but we have to continue uh, enriching us as persons, uh, as citizens, as citizens of our countries and citizens of our regions and of our world. Well, thank you, Raphael, for coming in and sharing so much. You really do span everything from government research and consulting with your ministry to getting recognition at that, to your academic background and electrical engineering and passion for physics earlier, to being the director of research at the School of Engineering, uh, to being a co-founder of a startup, uh, Quantum South, where you already have traction and continue to grow. Uh, your your uh, really quite practical background uh, from broadcasting to putting in integrated video into the supermarkets and to being the Nash, a member of the National Research System and fellow of the National Academy of Engineering, awarded the top scientists for, because of your ex ex extensive experience. And then from a contribution standpoint, as regional director of Latin America for the IEEE 
Consumer Technology Society, member of the Board of Governors, distinguished lecturer. And as you mentioned, you're just going to head off to IEEE Entrepreneurship, the elected member of the Administrative Committee, the IEEE Broadcast Technology Society, uh, chairing the Education Committee. And your in research interests are so very transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary from quantum computing to video experience quality to industrial and social applications of artificial intelligence and technology. And of course, every other aspect, I mean, you're involved. So you are definitely the star, a North Star for the audience of a, a remarkable career. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing so much of your experiences with our audience. Stephen, thank you very much for your invitation. My last word would be uh, for my family. You know, all that you have been mentioning right now has been done together with my wife and uh, during the time that my five children were born. So we have a large and happy family. Um, well, that is my closer family. We have a, a, a larger family with very loved uh, relatives. But well, this family with my wife and my five children, well, they have been part of this. Uh, I couldn't have made that with, without them. Um, well, I want to thank them. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen, for this uh, moving interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.